What's up everybody and welcome to Honey Hole Hangout. Today we have a great video for y'all. Zach ties his foam frog popper that we named the pimple popper. I can't think of a better name. Zach doesn't like it, but anyway, it's a foam popper that you tie with sheet foam. Really easy to tie. Zach's gonna break it down and I hope you guys enjoy today's video. All right, Zach, what are we tying up today? Today we are tying up my, uh, my frog popper. So Zach's pimple popper. You like the pimple popper name we I can like go it. with it we can go with pimple popper so that where did work. you get the idea for this? so my the idea for this came out of necessity because i wanted to tie some popping frogs but i did not want to go buy any foam heads or um any of those created like double barrel poppers or anything yeah. like that um i just wanted to be able i had some foam at home and I want to be able to tie up a nice little frog. I tried a couple variations, and this one is the one that it just it looks clean, it looks mean, and it catches bass specifically uh, like none other. I've also caught some panfish and and other things on it as well, and actually some rios and Rio Grande cichlids and, and stuff like that. But this uh, is definitely a bass fly for the most part. So the first thing after we get a few of our thread wraps on there is we are going to go with some craft fur ep fiber right but i am in love with chartreuse i also love pink as well but uh we're just gonna get a nice chunk of that guy uh, and if you guys don't know when you work with craft fur it's kind of messy it is definitely messy but also you cut your little chunk off towards the base of it Definitely cut off of the base yeah. of the patch because it makes it easier to work with on future flies. So you can always trim it shorter right. and get rid of the materials. But and I've definitely made some mistakes sometimes where I just like, I am in a hurry and I just kind of grab a huge chunk anywhere on my patch and I end up with a huge chunk of fur missing from some place that later down the line but I actually end up needing. If you don't have craft fur, you can use bucktail. Oh, yeah. There's and like so many things. Like it doesn't really matter. I've used uh, zonker strips. I have used, yeah, some deer hair, right? Uh, the most important thing is just building up a little bit of bulk off the fly, kind of like a tail, right? So uh, we got a good little chunk here, right? First wrap is always a little loose and you kind of tighten it down, cinch it down and follow it back as you go. And if you build up a little bit up here, don't worry about it. We're gonna trim that and also we're gonna cover it with a ton of foam. Uh, but, you know, it makes it a little bit easier if you trim off some of it. So we got that and we got our nice little tail. And again, this is a bass popper, so do not be afraid if it is crazy and funky because the bass really don't care. And which is kind of why I like tying this up because yeah, Zach, you, you're known for tying like dirty, dirty flies that catch, flies fish, catch fish, man. They right. catch fish. Zach, that's what you're All right. I mean, I can speak to the bass this way, man. Like bass aren't clean. They're out there. I mean, I guess, you know, they're hardy, right. Blue they're, blue. they're just they're doing, blue they're just getting through their day to day, man. Yeah. You know? Uh, all right, so the next thing we're gonna put on is a little bit of flash, you know uh, I like to consider myself a flashy person. So if I have a fancy Zach pimple popper fly, it's got to have some flash, right? You know what I actually do I'm yeah. a fan of the pimple popper videos. I forget that doctor's name, but like Dr. Pimple popper. Dr. popper and I will just find myself like on her Instagram and I will just be like in it. Uh, but you know, the thing I was really into before the pimple popper was the bot fly videos. Ooh. Did you ever watch the bot fly Hell ones? Oh yeah, they're Dude, fantastic. They're fantastic, but they're so dirty. Yeah. <laughs> they are honestly one of the grossest, but like, it's like a train wreck, you can't look away. So, uh, we need two, uh, what do you say, maybe like a third of a quarter inch, half inch pieces of foam right uh any two colors you choose maybe look around and see if you have frogs um or toads around your honey hole and uh kind of based on there the uh, frogs that we have here they are kind of like this beige white kind of underbelly and they have like a brown uh greenish type of uh 
um, like top of their of their skin, right? So we are going to go with these. Now the first thing that I do is I take my brown foam, right? And if I didn't mention before, uh, we are using a Gamakatsu um, B10S, and this is a size four. Um, you know, you can tie these. My first iteration was actually just on a large uh, streamer hook. I think it was a size four or a size two. But um, I feel like the Gamakatsu has that wide gap that really, really kind of helps. So we take our foam, right? And I just kind of trim it off because this essentially is just going to be the part we can actually um, tie on to our hook and we're going to fold it over kind of like this, right? So it's okay to have that kind of trimmed and if it looks bad and uneven, nobody cares because nobody can see that. It's a dirty, fly. dirty fly, man. Dirty flies catch fish all day long. So one loose wrap to kind of get it in place. And that loose wrap just makes it so that the foam doesn't turn. Right, exactly. It just kind of grabs it and helps hold it in place. Exactly. And so, you know, if you have a nice little rotary vise, you can use that to actually cinch it down, kind of get it. And like I said, nobody's going to see these dirty wraps underneath here. You're really, your whole job is just making sure that that foam is not going to go anywhere when you got the bass of a lifetime munching on this fly. All right. And get a couple of. Now, your tying on my vice is a weird tying on my vice. You know, it's not that weird. I like the Regal. Um, it's a comfortable foot vice to tie on. I normally tie on a Renzetti. And so it is a little bit like it's bulky. You know, this is a bulky vice. Um, I'm not going to complain about it. It's nice. You know, so, all right. The next part, you're going to bend it over so that you have your hook, um, the eye of the hook open, and you get this little, it's going to be a lip of your fly, right? So then you take one loose wrap and you're kind of building a head of your frog, right? So we're going to take it, do a couple of wraps, just kind of like that. And that's all we're going to do. And then you can go ahead and cut off, uh, let's say that much for right now, right? And we'll change it up a little bit later. But for right now, beautiful, dirty, just like I like it. So now we're going to work on our top. We're not. All right, everybody. We're not going to do this. We're just going to take a couple of wraps back and we're just going to send that forward for right now, which is fine. Which is fine. It's a dirty fly. It's a dirty fly. We all make mistakes. Exactly. So we're not going to sugarcoat perfect flies. We're not. No, perfect flies don't catch fish, man. I want to put them up in, in, a, in like a little display box in my room, you know? I, w I could edit that out. I'm not going to. I'm no. Leave it in. Who? No, dude, don't edit it out. If you want, people need to see how things happen, you know. So now <laughs> you're going to, <laughs> with your belly sticking out straight forward, you're going to take your green foam and do a similar thing. And again, it's okay if it looks a little janky, right? It does not have to be perfect because this is just going to be the body or the part that we tie down to our hook. So, same thing. Take it. One loose wrap, two loose wrap, straighten it on, and now we're really gonna tie this foam onto our body. And you can use some glue. I've done that before to kind of make sure that foam isn't gonna go anywhere. Uh, I've kind of figured that the glue on this part doesn't really matter, you know? I mean, you can put it there if you it's just, you know, if it makes your heart happy, do that. But you don't have to. All right, so again, nice little rotary vice makes things a lot easier. And perfect, okay. So, might need to straighten it out just a hair. Now with the part we were looking for. See, I was, trying to I was so excited to show you guys how this looks that I was jumping the gun. But we're gonna take it, fold both the belly and the top green portion give it one tight pull and like i said now we're really just kind of building up the head of our fly right so 
give it just a few wraps. And if you guys notice, I don't count my wraps because I make dirty bass bugs. That doesn't matter how many wraps I have, right? I, I, got, I got a size four hook, I don't have to count. Now, when it comes to trout season, I, I struggle because I put like a million wraps on all of my trout flies. So, dude, it's dirty. It catches fish though, man, every time. So, now we're going to take our scissors and we're just going to kind of, you know, trim it up how you would see a frog, right? Now, that doesn't really look like a frog, but it's about to. Look, look at that. That's a nice little, just a nice little frog. And this could be the last thing you do, or it could be the middle thing you do, right? This is the middle thing we're doing right now. Because, what's a frog without legs? It's just, it's just a fat snake. It's just a, it's just a fat snake. <laughs> so, we're going to take some nice little, uh, what do they call these? Silly legs? Willy legs? Rubber legs. I don't know either. But, you want about two per side, right? And what you're going to do is you're going to take them and fold them in half, right? Fold them in half. Around your thread. Around the thread. Bring it to the body. And just give it, you know, one thread wrap to kind of make sure it's all in place. And then you're going to want to kind of, not like there, right? Because we're not giving it horns. We're giving it legs. So kind of right there where the belly and the top foam piece meet, right? So, on the other side of our fly, we've got some great legs. Let's make sure that our right side of our fly looks the same. So, same thing, right? Hold them over. One loose wrap to make sure we can position it. And then, yeah, give them maybe three little wraps. Now going in between the legs is definitely the hardest part, but if you're a seasoned pro like me, you guys can do it. <laughs> you like I'm that? Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, all right. So we got a good little, good little frog. He's going, you know, and if I were to redo this, I might make that bottom section a little bit longer just to cover up our little foam right there. But you know what? The dirtier the better. And maybe a bass look at that and be like, oh, that's an injured frog, so it's even easier to eat now. So, you know, you gotta get in the mind of the frog, of the bass. So, our next step, we're gonna whip finish. So, take your whip finish tool, right? You place it on top, make sure that hook catches it, and then pick up your hand, so that way the bottom part catches. You're gonna make a little triangle with the line, and in the worst part of this whole fly, is avoiding, the legs. avoiding the legs, right? And maybe give it. And you're not whip finishing behind the eye. You're whip finishing where you tied those bodies down. On that head, where we kind of built up the neck of the frog, right? Yeah. There we go. And then give it a nice little pull, and we should be good. So. Now, I know some people are like, oh, but I would finish two and three times. You know, you just did it once and you pulled it. And that's because uh, we got super glue. So, we're just going to super glue a little bit just to make sure. You that know, Gorilla Glue is gel. Is like it is. Good. It's got the little squeeze nozzles. Yeah. And last time when I was making it, I uh, super glued my hand to the fly, which, uh, you know, it's not a great idea, but I like to think that I put a little piece of me in all my flies. So that one literally had some skin. <laughs> uh, so our next thing that I'm doing is it's kind of hard for our eyes to adhere to the foam if they're not perfectly kind of flush. So I just trim them up a little bit to give a flat surface for our eyes to attach to. All right, and yeah, that looks great. And as Landon taught me last time, because I did glue my hand to the fly. If you tilt it on its side, you tap a little dot of super glue. Just drop it on. And then you take your little eye, and I guarantee you I still glue my finger to it. Oh, see? Look, because now I gotta touch it. Oh look at that. That that just looks beautiful. You know. We call it one eye willy. 
Now, I'm gonna risk it and turn it because this Gorilla Glue does dry pretty fast. And another little dot right there. Got a lovely little googly eye. And you don't have to use googly eye. You can yeah, use. I like them. Yeah. They look, they look fun. They do look fun. And to be honest, maybe they make a little rattle sound. Yeah. You know? The bass like that little rattle. So let it go. Let it get going. And yeah. looks good. Looks solid. Now, okay, the last thing we have to do though, and if you make this fly and you tag honey hole angling. If you don't have this, I'm gonna be pretty mad because you gotta make it look pretty, right? Half of the reason why we fly fish and we tie flies is because we wanna look at the fly, you know? Uh, now I am going to grab, without knocking over the camera, some pretty nice little colors, right? So, my favorite color is purple, it's color royalty. And to be honest, the bass aren't gonna see the top of our fly. So what I do is I take a little purple marker and I just give my fly some character, you know? Give them some dots. Make it match your rubber legs, you know? Make it a little psychedelic. Give it kind of a crazy little effect. Just a tiny effect that just makes it look better for us. Oh yeah. Are you kidding me? They make it look a million times better. And then I flip it over and I'm gonna add some yellow to the bottom. Just because, you know. Maybe this frog has yellow blood and he's bleeding out. And the bass sees that. All right? But that is Zach's pimple popper. And that's it. Easy as that. Go catch some bass. Have fun. Do it. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Drop us a like if you enjoyed the video. Leave a comment down below. Let us, let us know what you think about Zach's fly. And if you would fish that out on your local waters for bass, Check out our podcast called Honey Hole Hangout. Descriptions in the link below. We have a Discord. We have an online store, whatever. There's a lot of ways to support us. Check out what we're doing. And uh, we appreciate it as always. And we'll see you on the next video or out on the water.